The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I dread? When those who do evil draw near, they stumble and fall. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, a special welcome to all of our parishioners, our friends, our visitors who are joining us this Monday morning of the 10th week in ordinary time. As we gather to celebrate the Eucharist, we begin by standing humbly before God, God's holy altar, asking for his mercy and his forgiveness. Sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring each of us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Be with you. 
and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they assault you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because your reward will be great in heaven. Thus they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Again, good morning. A very special welcome to our parishioners, all of our friends, our visitors. As we begin this week, we listen to one of the most popular and most familiar Gospels in Scripture, the Beatitudes. Whenever I think about the Beatitudes, I think of my year as a Franciscan novice back in the early 80s, up in Kenny Buckport, Maine, in the Franciscan Monastery. My beloved novice master, Father Bernardino Grassley's, was an immigrant from Lithuania. And of course, as you know, back in those days, Lithuania was behind the Iron Curtain, so the Franciscan friars had escaped from behind the Iron Curtain, studied in Rome, got ordained, and came to America. And they settled up in Kennebuck, Maine. And that's where we had an official. And so Father Bernardino is English was his, like his third language. And he used to teach us scripture and teach us lots of things about the Franciscan way of life. But he loved to teach about the Beatitudes. And, and he would, every night before class, he'd be in his room working and working on the scripture the class he was about to present the next morning. And he came up with this very simple, again, English being his third language, and he said the Beatitudes. What are the Beatitudes? And he, he came up with this idea that's very simple, but it was as if he struck gold. He said, the attitudes, attitudes to be. When you stop and think about it, well, I've been to the simple plan of words, there's a deep truth to that, the beatitudes, attitudes to be, attitudes we need to take on so that we may be, that we may be the children of God that we're called to that we might be able to live up to our baptismal promises to be the children of God, to be the light of the world, to be God, Christ's presence in the world. We had to take on those attitudes. And what that really meant very simply was that we had to realize that as a Christian, we have to deal with life on life's terms. And sometimes it rains and sometimes the, the sun shines. Sometimes there's, there's sadness. Sometimes there's joy and everything in between. But as a Christian, a follower of Christ, we have, to, we have to deal with life on life's terms and realize what Elijah realized in our first reading this morning is that when life goes bad, when hardships and trials and tribulations encroach on us, we have to do what Elijah did, trusted that God had a plan. And we were very very clearly understood that God had a plan to keep Elijah well fed and to alleviate his thirst. And all Elijah had to do was follow that plan. As long as he listened to God, he was safe. Same thing with our Beatitudes. As long as we listen to those Beatitudes and take on those attitudes, we will be who we're called to be. Will it exempt us from persecution or trial or tribulations or sorrow? No will empower us because God has a wonderful way 
And he's the only one who is able to bring something good as something seemingly bad on the surface. That's by the grace of God. You know, it's that corny saying we always say, you know, life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Well, God invented that, that little jingle there. Because it's so true. We can take some, God can take something that on the surface looks to us like a, a horrible, terrible thing, a tragedy in life, a hardship, a mistake. And he can turn it around upside down so the whole idea of God can write with, with crooked lines. He can take whatever happens in this world and make something good come out of it. Make it work to his glory and honor. If we believe that, if we take on an attitude, that's who we, we are, that's who we become. If we be that person, that Christ-like person, then no matter what happens in life, we can always see that silver lining. We can always look beyond the surface and see what's underlying. What surprise, what, what plan God has for us. But it takes the wonderful virtue that Elijah had, and that was trust. You have to trust God and trust your life into his, his hands. And then we'll be safe. And then we'll be okay. Because then we'll really believe what we just recited in our response to song. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let us now offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. That the Lord may continue to bless and care for all the leaders of our church, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may grant our civic authorities a clean heart to do God's work, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who hunger and thirst may be satisfied through the generous mercy of God, we pray. Lord, Hear our prayer. That all those who are gathered in this holy place may be brought ever closer to the heart and mind of Christ through his word and sacraments, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may know the peace and comfort of God's eternal rest, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for a special intention for the repose of the soul of Deborah Sepsi, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, hear the prayers we offer this morning with confidence and answer them according to your holy will. We ask all things in the name of your Son, our brother and Savior, Jesus the Christ.
blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine of life you, fruit of the vine, and the work of human hands. It will become the blood of Christ, our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Together let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so do all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus the Christ. So it was ended, they took the child's, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it, for this is the child's of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin.
his true faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your daughter, Deborah Sepsi, whom you have called in this world to yourself. Grant that Debbie, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady in the Mountain, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, Saints Francis and Claire, each of our patron saints and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Good morning. 
is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my saving strength. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy. Graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks, Mr. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us. Hope you tune in tomorrow. God bless.